Hi there. Today, we'll learn more about acids and bases. We know that acid-base indicators help us determine whether a substance is an acid or a base. Let us revise what we know about universal indicator. This chart shows the color range for universal indicator. This chart shows us the exact pH of a liquid. If we compare the color of the universal indicator when placed in the solution to the color chart. In this lesson, we will investigate what happens when an acid reacts with an alkali. An alkali is a soluble base. We will only be working with basic solutions in our experiments, so it is more correct to call these solutions alkali solutions. We use an indicator to help us explain our observations because all the solutions that we will use, like this acid solution, are colorless. We will determine what the products are when an acid reacts with an alkali. After that, we will write balanced chemical equations for this type of reaction. This process, when an acid reacts with an alkali, is known as neutralization. Let us join Diasha as she investigates the concept of neutralization in more detail. Okay, so in this lesson, we will focus on the idea of neutralization. Let's start by looking at a simple experiment. Hi everyone, have a look at what we're doing here. In this burette, I have some hydrochloric acid. And in the flask here, I have some sodium hydroxide. I'm going to add a few drops of universal indicator to the sodium hydroxide. And it turns a purple blue. This tells us that it has a pH of about 12. I wonder what would happen if I added the acid to the flask. Think about it. Let's see if your predictions are correct. Did you see the indicator changed color? That means the pH has changed too. I'm going to take some of this solution and pour it into an evaporating dish. We'll leave it for a while, and we'll come back and have a look at it a little later. Bye for now. Thanks, John. Now remember, we can check the pH by comparing the color of the solution to the universal indicator reference chart. Now the color of this solution is green, so when comparing it to the color on the chart, we can see that the pH of the solution is now 7. This solution is neutral. We say the hydrochloric acid has neutralized the sodium hydroxide solution. But how did this happen? Well, we need to recap some definitions first. Can you remember how we defined an acid and a base? An acid is a proton donor. A base is a proton acceptor. A hydrogen ion is also called a proton. So, in this solution of hydrochloric acid, I have a high concentration of hydrogen ions. In the alkali, the concentration of hydrogen ions is low and the concentration of hydroxide is high. Take a look at the following animation to see what happens to the hydrogen ions when we add some acid to the alkali. The hydrogen ions are donated by the acid and the alkali accepts these hydrogen ions. They combine with the hydroxide to form water molecules. When every hydroxide ion has combined with a hydrogen ion, we can say that the acid has neutralized the alkali. We can say that the concentration of the hydrogen ions is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ions. This means the pH is 7, just like the pH of pure water. Now, we have shown that one of the products is water, but what about any other products? Let's take a look at the chemical equation to see if this will give us a clue as to what may be happening here. Right, to start with, we have sodium hydroxide, and this has a formula NaOH. We added hydrochloric acid, which has a formula HCl. 
Now we have seen that the hydrochloric acid donates the hydrogen ion to the sodium hydroxide. The hydroxide ion accepts the hydrogen ion and water is formed. Now can you see that we are left with sodium ions and chloride ions? These will stay dissolved in the water. Do you think there is any evidence of this product? Let's go to John's lab to have another look at the product that he left in the evaporating dish. Let's have a look at what I've got here. In the original solution, nothing much seems to have happened. But what about in the evaporating dish? Notice some of the water has evaporated and on the sides I have some crystals forming. These white crystals are sodium chloride with a formula of NaCl. Wow, isn't that amazing? Let's take a look at the overall reaction. Sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid react to form sodium chloride and water. Notice that the equation is balanced as it stands. Now sodium chloride belongs to a group of substances called salts. In fact, sodium chloride is known as table salt and is used to flavor food. But what is a salt? Here is the definition. A salt is a substance that forms when the hydrogen ion of an acid is displaced by a metal ion. Let's put this definition into practice. We used hydrochloric acid to make sodium chloride. So starting with hydrochloric acid, can you see that when hydrogen is displaced by sodium, we get sodium chloride? Now here's a question for you to think about. If hydrochloric acid formed a salt, that is a chloride, when it reacted with an alkali, what salt would form when sulfuric acid or nitric acid reacted with sodium hydroxide? Let's look at the formula of these acids as a starting point. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4 and nitric acid is HNO3. Now, if the alkali neutralized these acids, the hydrogen would be replaced by the sodium ion to form salt and water. H2SO4 becomes Na2SO4. HNO3 becomes NaNO3. Now, I think it's safe to say that these salts can be called sodium sulfate and sodium nitrate. So far, we have introduced some important ideas about neutralization in this lesson. When an acid reacts with an alkali, the products formed are salt and water. We can write this as a general equation. An acid plus an alkali react to form salt plus water. Also remember that a chloride salt forms when hydrochloric acid has been neutralized. A sulfate salt forms from sulfuric acid and a nitrate salt forms from nitric acid. Diasha has explained that the reaction between an acid and an alkali is known as a neutralization reaction. A neutralization reaction is a chemical reaction in which an acid and a base react to form a salt. During a neutralization reaction, the pH of the solution changes. Now that we have the general equation for the reaction between an acid and an alkali, let us look at another specific example. Give a balanced equation for the reaction between nitric acid and magnesium hydroxide. So our reactants are nitric acid and magnesium hydroxide. We know that if we use nitric acid, that a nitrate salt will be formed. In this case, the salt is magnesium nitrate. And to complete the equation, we know that the reaction of an acid with an alkali produces a salt and water. So we fill in water as the other product. Then we need to check whether the equation is balanced. It is not. So we add a 2 in front of the nitric acid and a 2 in front of water to balance the equation. Lastly, 
we put in the phase indicators to show that we are working with reactants and products that are in aqueous solution. Today, we had a look at how to prepare a salt using an acid and an alkali. Join me in the next lesson when we investigate other ways of preparing salts. Until then, goodbye.